to here because the only one I don't have is the one that I gave to you. I was born in Stirling, so halfway between Glasgow and Edinburgh, about a little bit further north. Um, but I actually grew up in a very rural village called Killin, um, which is in the middle of nowhere, in mountains and lochs, very, very nice. Well, I, I did ballet from when I was a little tot, don't know what age. And, um, I did lots of other stuff as well, like acting, only amateur dramatics though, playing the violin, playing the piano, um, but it was dancing that kind of I did the most and when it came to leaving school I decided that I didn't want to stop dancing so I carried on. I did In Scotland our, the education system is slightly different, we've got hires instead of A-levels, so I did all my hires in one year, and so I left school a year earlier than I could have. Well, it's kind of like after sixth form. Anyway, I left and did a, a foundation course in contemporary dance in Dundee. And, uh, and then I auditioned for, I was going to do a degree in contemporary dance, and at the time, there, are no, there were no degree courses in Scotland to do that course, so we all had to look in England for the different schools, and I auditioned for several different ones, and the one I got into was called the Laban Centre, which is in New Cross, well it's now in Deptford, but in South East London, and so I came down one day with my mother, and we had, we had to get up very early in the morning, Got on the train at I don't know what time, got to London at 12 o'clock and I had five hours to find somewhere to live before I had to get on the train back to Scotland again. It's not very long, is it? I mean, must have, we must have had a list of places to uh, go to, which we did. Anyway, so in um, 1998, just before I turned 18, I moved to London to start my degree in contemporary dance. So then I did a foundation in art, because you couldn't just go straight onto a degree without having any portfolio, and um, that was at London Metropolitan University, and so I ended up staying on there for my degree, and that took me up to 2007, where I graduated then, and I, uh, the art centre here in Chatham, I have friends who come from here and so I had visited here a few times. I ended up getting offered a job in managing the cafe here, which I accepted and I so I ended up moving here. And it's very difficult to carry on well I find it very difficult to carry on painting uh, and manage the cafe. So I ended up going part time now when was it? It's over a year ago now. Um, so that I could concentrate more on my painting. Uh, I, I'm doing this exhibition in Whitstable in a month with three other people. I did a fine art degree and not once did I get taught how to paint on that degree. They kind of just left us to it. I taught myself. I, like on my foundation I was doing, I have got some stashed away there, I was doing completely different stuff uh, which involved PVA glue and soil and rubbish and paint. I was sticking, making really 3D sort of images. And I, yeah, I did quite like them. But then eventually I decided I, that wasn't actually me painting. I was relying on materials to make the work as opposed to actually painting. So I decided to just do nothing but paint. And um, what did that, that's when I first started. I, was, I think I, I started a project where I was thinking about my memories and so I started on that and then um, yeah I just kind of developed from there and I did paintings and my tutor said oh that doesn't look good you need to think more about that and eventually I just kind of developed my own style and to be honest in my second year um, you have like four different tutors or I did anyway um, and they're all telling you what to do and saying, oh, this is good, this is interesting. 
this isn't whatever. And the more you listen to them all, the, I found that my art suffered. Uh, and so when it got to my third year, I thought, right, I'm just not going to listen to them. I'm just going to do what I want to do. Because I was getting all right marks, but nothing really special. And as soon as I started not listening to them and going, right, I'm just, just going to paint what I want to paint without thinking about concepts or fancy, fine, arty stuff. I'll just paint what I want to paint. And if they like it, they do. If they don't... Anyway, I started getting ease after that. This is... Um, on the Great Lines, uh, which is the top of the hill over there. This is looking off the top of the hill over Chatham, but from further back, so you can't actually see Chatham. I can't use acrylic. It just dries too quickly. I mean, I used to use acrylic, but... It just seems to dry too quickly for the method of painting I've developed. And as I'm addicted to blending and blurring, oil paint is perfect. We have paint, I'm trying to spread it. With that brush, not so much. It all depends on the, uh, what's the word? The springiness. So I could treat my canvases to make them smoother, I never really do. Um, hmm. Some people pre-mix their colours on a palette and then like one of the other painters here does that. I do pre-mix colours but I also do a lot of mixing once it's actually on the canvas. So if I think that's not dark enough I might add a darker colour and blend it in and then it becomes darker rather than just doing it dark. You have to be critical I think because otherwise you just put any old stuff on there. It has to be something that I think is worth. Hmm. This canvas is not as taut as I would like it. Although I did like plan it all out, sometimes it just happens naturally. But if they just do. think about it too much in my paintings but it can all be changed by the focus like if I have most of that blurry and there's just a bit of focus there it works more than if it would all be in focus will be vibrant again, although not as vibrant as if I'm putting it on white. But then if I mix it in that, it mixes in. Mm. And actually, this brush is too big. Much better with this kind of stuff. Although there's so many other people that say they can't do oils because it takes too long to dry and I guess they use paint dark enough but it's got so much white I think I'll just leave it until we make it darker later.
where will you be in five years' time? I really don't know. I can't imagine the future. Can you imagine where you would be in five years' time? What does it take to be a successful artist? Hmm. See, that's the thing. I suppose if you're successful, you would be... I don't know. Some people might not want to do it for the money, and therefore they certainly might be successful in their eyes, but not sell a thing. I don't know. I'm just doing it because I like the image. But I can't see where I'll be in the future. I don't really have any plans. I don't have like a map in my mind saying I want to end up there. I'll kind of end up where I end up. I don't know. I'm too indecisive to have any idea of where I'm going to end up. Might change my mind halfway along the way. So how is it you got asked to exhibit at Whitstable? Uh, um, well, Chris, who had already done an exhibition there, um, they asked him if he wanted the slot and so he decided he wanted to do it as a group show and he asked us, meaning me and two other people, if we wanted to do it with him. So that's how that came about. It's kind of like he was offered it and he didn't want to do it all himself. Right. So we decided to do a group show. Which is called Four. And we couldn't decide on. It's not also different. It hasn't really got a theme. The theme is us. Because we're all completely different, unique artists. That's why it's called Four, because there's four of us. But yeah, it's also been very difficult to decide what to paint because we haven't got a theme or anything. It could be anything. It doesn't really help you start. You have to set your own theme. Well, the one that I've already done, that was the smaller one, was called Laying on the Lines. Right. But one, because it's from the Great Lines, I think that's what it's called. And this is the Great Lines Memorial. And two, probably because I was laying down, taking the picture. There's a man there, I think it's a man, lying down. I'm not very good at thinking of titles. I hate it actually, because that can also add a connotation to the work that, you know, because before I was going water reflection number one, water reflection number two, it's really boring. Each other 
start to fall asleep But then I realized It was just a dream But it's okay Your presence still feels you to me in my mind It's too wrong Cause that was your midnight song If I could just see you one more time, then maybe, maybe, maybe you decide that there's more to right and wrong, and maybe you could write one more midnight song together in the still of the night. Decide to fall asleep, but then I realized it was just a dream. But it's okay, your presence still feels true to me, and my mind still wrong. Cause that was your man. Finished? Question mark? I think it probably is it. Sometimes I feel a bit cheated when I'm with you I just want to hide until our argument is through Other times I just want to hang out and be your friend If only the scars that we create Thank you.
Perhaps the exhibition is you continually adjusting them for five days. <laughs> Big day of the exhibition. Private viewing. It's not really that private though, is it? Isn't it? You've invited everyone. <laughs> if you invite everyone, then you get some. But the best response I've had is for that one, that one, and those two. And people do like, that one's not really had much said about it. Um, Midnight Dream is not, someone said yesterday, oh yeah, I love that one, but really, they haven't had very many comments, which is weird, because I quite like that one, but people like that one more. That's another thing I've talked about with people. You can like something, but you might not want to put it on your wall, and there's lots of paintings that I like that I probably wouldn't put on my wall. But you can, like, if it's something really grotesque and horrible, you can appreciate how they've done it and you like it, but I wouldn't want, like, a horrible, like that painting we drove past today, I wouldn't want that on my wall, but I could appreciate that it's good. Oh 
really stunning. I think it's probably the most unusual and striking art I've seen for a while. Yeah. Um, and all I can say is Tracy Evan What retard would paint it just before it was loaded in a van? Can you see me giving you the eye?